Brian Westbrook with GeekWire Studios here at AWS reInvent 2024. Joined now by Dave Salvatore, Director of Accelerated Computing Products at NVIDIA, and Jake Banks, and you are the Global AI Solutions Director for Cloudera. Thank you so much for joining us. What a great topic. We're going to have a lot of fun here. I want to start with you, Dave. How does NVIDIA's partnership with AWS support innovation for partners such as Cloudera? So NVIDIA and AWS have a long-standing partnership. In fact, AWS was the first cloud provider to put GPUs in the cloud about 14 years ago. And we've been innovating together ever since. We're both very engineering-driven companies and, and innovation is in our DNA. And so we have very much a full-stack partnership. While we, of course, have our great GPUs and you heard uh, both uh, uh, Matt as well as uh, Andy talk about them this morning in your keynote, um, it goes beyond that. We have a full stack partnership where, where our technologies are integrated up and down the AWS stack to make sure that uh, customers can take advantage of NVIDIA acceleration on the AWS platform, so it's a great partnership. And I love that you're talking about GPUs just 14 years ago being the first to do that. We think back now and we think, you know, how would you not have GPUs in the cloud platform this day? And speaking of cloud platforms, tell us about how that partnership has really helped Cloudera. Yeah, so Cloudera right now is, is leveraging actually a lot of the NVIDIA services. The big one for us is we've been on, built our new AI inference service mm -hmm. on NVIDIA NIM microservices. And so this allows us to get access to highly optimized versions of open source models directly within that service. So we have customers like uh, Mercy Corps is a customer of ours, customer of ours that has about 6,000 humanitarians across the world. And they have a lot of uh, use cases that they're trying to solve. And a lot of those use cases can be solved using like AI or ML methodologies, but they're just unaware of them. And so we actually built a solution for them where we've taken their entire knowledge repository of all these use cases. We put that into a vector store and we've used retrieval augmented generation RAG along with this optimized model. So we're actually using Mistral 7, uh, or Mistral, a 7 billion parameter version of that to be able to deliver that. So this is a use case that we built in about six weeks that's really made it possible for all these humanitarians to have access to be able to know what services they can use within the entire governing system. Lots of services, lots of great technology, but what is the human impact to that? Obviously we know what Mercy Corps does, but how does this technology enable them to complete their goals? And it makes life really like easier for them. So as a, if I'm a humanitarian worker and I just want to be able to solve these problems, you know, to be able to make the world a better place, I don't want to spend all my time Googling different ways to do it. I want to know things that have been successful for others within the company. And that's what this application allows them to do, is taking that information, making it accessible to them. It was very easy for us to build with the NVIDIA NIM microservices. And tell us about that process. How did you go about building these, th these things on the AWS platform? Yeah, so the AI inference service was built around NIM microservices, so it makes it one-click deployable with the, within the Cloudera platform. And then from there, it was really just building a lot of the application around that so that we could ask questions of the model, we could pass in the similar uh, information found within the vector store to that to be able to get the relevant information to the end user. And Dave, add to that the NVIDIA layer. Obviously, we're in a great success story. How did NVIDIA contribute to that? So, uh, you know, Jake touched on a number of things. Our NIM microservices are a huge enabler to make it much, much easier to deploy these models. Um, you know, building AI applications historically has been hard, and it's been kind of the realm of, frankly, very deep topic experts, but things like NIM are meant to democratize that process. They're meant to make it easier and allow customers to be able to deploy those models in a matter of minutes, days, as opposed to months, possibly years. Back up in just a little bit, bring us into the NIM journey. What did that look like? Where did that come from? How is that bad? You know, it was born of a recognition um, that ease of use is an important value driver, right? We love performance at NVIDIA and we build amazing infrastructure to enable great performance for generative AI. With that said, um, that's only useful to the extent that it can be deployed and be deployed easily because not all organizations have deep expertise in generative AI. It's a relatively new field. And so in order to bring that expertise and essentially package it, containerize it in such a way that many more customers can deploy these models and get value from them was one of the main goals of NIM. Now, NIM is a product, NIM is a technology being deployed on the AWS ecosystem. How does this help bring new customers and opportunities 
maybe in examples, uh, maybe in the different in different areas, but how are you bringing new opportunities to AWS with NIM? It's a great question. So one of the things we're doing is we're actually building on the initial NIM offering with something we call Blueprint Agents, which are very use case specific implementations of NIMs which make it even faster to deploy these models and use them for very specific use cases. We initially started with about a half dozen specific use cases and now we're going to grow that over time, particularly as we head into the new year, we'll be growing that into many more of these very specific use cases to allow customers, particularly those who are relatively new to the field of Gen AI, to be able to more quickly and easily deploy those models. It's about making it easier, it's about making it more simple. Now, Jake, I have to ask you, what are you looking forward to in your partnership with NVIDIA and also AWS? What's next, what's on the horizon? I think more early on in that AI for the service being released, that was only released about a month ago, and for a lot of a lot of it right now is just seeing where our customers take that. We're an enabler for a platform, we're allowing our customers to build things with that. It's exciting to see how fast it is people can get to production with this. What we saw in the past early on in the generative AI craze was how hard and difficult it was to get a model hosted in your environment. Right. You could work with like an open AI or someone else that is hosting the models, but if you wanted to work with an open source model because you had privacy concerns or cost concerns, it took a while to be able to do that. So then being able to work with NIM microservices built around our AI inference service, it's literally a matter of click clicks to get up and running and be able to have that service available to our end users. So even those that have requirements of using these open source models, they can be building very, very fast. So we're excited to see just the pace of innovation pick up as people start to use this service. And it becomes easier to deploy, easier to scale, easier to roll out to the general world. Thank you so much, Dave with NVIDIA and Jake with Cloudera. I'm Brian Westbrook with GeekWire Studios. Thanks for watching.